So, hey, Dave, how are you going? Um, have you had a good week? Uh, I had a terrific week, thank you. Um, yeah. You know, actually spending a few weeks living with my mother, which which is very nice. My wife and daughter are overseas at the moment, so me and the boys and the dog are bunking in with mum and, you know, I have to say it's been a pretty good experience and, and uh, yeah, but we are packing up this weekend and moving back home. So so mm -hmm. that's been, been a bit of a Do different you... thing. Sorry. So your daughter's just finished the HSC? Finished the HSC and she's one of Australia's leading K-pop fans. Um, Korean pop music is her absolute passion. So so that was her <laughs> sort of post-HSC treat from us, was a mother yeah. and daughter trip to South Korea. So they're just coming back from 10, 10 or 11 days there and I think they've had the time of their lives. It's nice mm -hmm. and cold and chilly over there, but they've had their feel of... Uh, Korean music and Korean culture, cuisine, and all that stuff. So I think they've they've really, really had a nice time together and, and bonded, had a bit of mother mother daughter bonding time, which was been really good. And I guess I've had some father son and mother bonding time as well. Mm. So which has which has been good. But the challenge when I live with my mother, even if it's just a week, but this time two weeks, is to to not put on more weight. She's got this. Uh, never-ending fear that I will die of starvation, which 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 evidence would suggest isn't a high risk. But uh, so yes, that's that's been one of the challenges. And I believe one of the things you've done this week is you've uh, had a little bit of a planning day earlier in the week, just to sort of think about 2024. And and uh, obviously, um, you know, the economy is going through some some pressures out there. So are you feeling uh, how are you feeling about 2024 at the moment? Well. I'm, you know, that'll be the start of our 25th year in business. And so uh, one of the things I love about what we do is what's in front of us is always a bit different, you know. So I'm never someone to say, oh, look, we've seen this before because we've, we've, there's always a change and there's always something different in terms of the environment that that's in front of us. But the one thing um, where I think we are well placed to at least guide our clients and some of the brokers in our group is is to help clients with with the with the challenges that we know will be in front of them so mm. obviously with cost of living and, and and the 12 or 13 rate rises um clients are feeling the pinch and uh you know over the years we've built all sorts of strategies to help help clients weather weather these types of storms um that 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 are coming their mm. way um and mm. and it, it does i mean we'll talk about interest rates in a minute but it doesn't look as though they're going to suddenly drop down quickly in any short space of time so so australians especially australians with mortgages are going to have to continue to find ways of of um managing this as best they can mm. how, how are you it? finding are you finding uh, in your client base, how are you finding? Um, what's the commentary coming out of out of the hunter? Uh, look, the property market seems to be holding up uh, reasonably well still, which I think is fairly common across most of the eastern seaboard. Uh, the, I mean, people are definitely uh, a little bit sort of conscious or, or um, anxious about you know what the next couple of years holds. I, I mean, I think the thing that surprised everyone this year is that we probably expected that the property market would soften a little bit more than it has. So I heard a report that's come out uh, a couple of weeks ago that apparently Sydney, Sydney has, has almost picked up everything that they lost in the property market last year. And, and that's, uh, uh, again, it's probably, it's probably pockets that defy that logic and there's probably other pockets that don't. Um, but Newcastle, I'd say it's the same, you know, um, quality property seems to be holding up um, reasonably well. I think days on market are, are longer for most real estate agents than what they've probably experienced over the last two or three years. But um, mm -hmm. but gen generally, people are still seeing, I, I, I call it safety or stability in, in the property market, which, you know, it, it's it's not just one thing. It's it's affected by the, the shortage of rentals as well. I think a lot of people um, get frustrated and almost pushed into looking at their options because, you know, they've, they've just been, you know, kicked out of their current rental. They've had three you know, moves in possibly two years because people have been um, landlords have been have been selling their properties or or putting rents up and things like that. 
So, yeah, I think there's a lot of reasons for it. But, yeah, generally, property market seems stable. Um, I, I, I'll be honest, I think we're down a little bit on, on, on last year in terms of, you know, where the market was and that sort of thing. So, um, but I think that's natural as well. I, I don't know if you'd agree with this, that when interest rates increase, it takes a little while for, the, for people's expectations, both from a buyer and a seller perspective, to readjust. And there's just that readjustment still sort of going on uh, at, at the moment. Mm. And there's still another 12 to 18 months of people rolling off some fixed rates. Um, mm. you know, some people got in towards the end of that last cycle, you know, around that, uh, you know, we had clients fixed under 2% there. I think they're all pretty much rolled off, but there was, um, there's certainly a lot of um, clients that were in around that 208, 214, 234, even 309. Right, mm. which which was at the end of that cycle, people were sort of bemoaning the fact that they got a three percent fixed rate, right, mm. at that time because they'd missed out on the the two one fours and the one eight fours, right. Mm. The, so we've got a few of those. I think there's another eighteen months or so um, of that, and and you know we in preparation, you know, we built we built a training webinar where um, you know the media calls at the cliff, right, and um, it's it's that it's not just coming off a fixed rate of three percent to suddenly paying six percent, but we've got a lot of clients with multiple investment loans, so they might be rolling off fixed to variable, so paying three three and a half percent more, but also rolling off a an interest only period to a twenty five year P and I rate, and mm. so so that situation is still playing out over the next twelve months, and those. Those situations can see a household um, have their mortgage repayments, depending on the size of the loan, of course. But we're we're talking four to five thousand dollars a month extra if they're if they're jumping three or four percent plus, switching from interest only to principal and interest. So that's that's still something that's coming coming at us. And 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 what we try and do, and I know you're the same, um, is to try and get as much communication to. Um, not just our client base, but to our audience on social media is, is, is it something that you need to plan about three months in advance for of how, how you're going to manage that um, um, to try and assuming most people's goals is to hold on to their properties, homes and investments, assuming that's the goal. Um, sometimes we'll need three or four months to, to put that picture together to make sure um, um, the landing is as soft as possible. Yeah, okay. And, and I guess, you know, thanks for your time today. And, and look, I guess one of the reasons why I wanted to get your thoughts and and for and hopefully for our listeners as well is is to just sort of, so we had this rate increase last week, all right? Mm-hmm. So, and um, Reserve came, Bank came out and did their sneaky around Melbourne Cup, which they, they quite often do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and I guess there was some commentary that sort of came out of that day, which um, I guess uh, nobody really enjoyed hearing, but it's probably important just to really sort of, you know, talk in a little bit more detail, which was just how sticky um, the inflation is still and that it's not sort of coming back as quickly as as, as what um, everyone might have expected and, and what the next 12 to 18 months, you know, might hold for us from an interest rate perspective. Um, so is that something you've been sort of, I guess, trying to process and think about since since last week? It is because I think um, whether it's the media or the industry press that you and I see, um, that I think potentially premature, there's been premature commentary as to when the end of this cycle is. And, mm. and I think in the last three months, and it might have just been the fact that we had a reprieve for two or three months in a row, um, the people started to think, are we at the end of this storm? And and I think people have been pulling in their, tightening their belts for quite a long period of time. Um, and so that might mean there's a bit of pent up energy that as soon as people see the end of the cycle, they might release, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that there's going to be a, um, I think it'll be better psychologically to potentially uh, not really have a a strong opinion in terms of consumers as to when the end of this cycle is, right? Mm. Because I think it's, A, it's going to be longer than we think. Um, And even what does the end of the cycle look like, right? What does that mean? And I think that means different things to different people. 
right? So we're at 475 RBA. You now is the end of the cycle, cycle just when it gets below that number or back below 4% or when we have our first reduction? You know what I mean? All the, mm. just, just when we have our first reduction from, four, let's say from 475 to 450, that hasn't done a lot to my cost of living, right? Um, uh, so I, I, I would be, I would be more mentally preparing the fact that it's here for a while. Whether we see an end of a cycle which looks like a long-term continuous downward trend, um, or not, I, I think, I think that it is just better for all of us as Aussies to um, build strategies to 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 cope with where we are at the moment and where we might be going to regardless as to whether or not there's a an end of a cycle or not well it's important to remember and and sometimes we can get sort of lost in this is that when you talk about a drop of inflation from 475 to 4.5 that still means that goods are going yeah, that, that, up that's a cash rate i'm talking about, yeah that's a cash rate Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No. My apologies. So, I guess what I was more referring to was that as inflation comes down, it still means that the cost of living is going up. It's just going up at a slower rate than what it was before. Um, so, and and I think the, the the trick is, and I think the Reserve Bank came out last week and sort of said, look, we actually don't really plan or expect inflation to get back to that two to three percent barrier now until possibly the end of 2025. Um, so, which, uh, you know, I think for me, uh, you know, most of the commentary three or four months ago was expecting that to be sort of late 2024. So everything's been pushed out a whole year now than, than, than probably what we were all expecting or hoping for. Um, but you're right. I mean, that, that quarter of a percent of interest rates is still, um, if, if rates start to come down, um, then, you know, that's still a problem in the sense that it's it's not going to make a, a big difference, just one. It, it really has to be two or three that we're going to start to feel that difference, isn't it? Mm, that's right. Yeah. Mm. And and, and uh, the other bit on the psychology of all of this, uh, what, one bit that I was talking about there was, you know, just that, that mental thing of something being at an end, therefore I can change my behaviour. And the other one is, you know, there's a lot in the commentary that, you know, we need to keep inflation under control and we're spending too much. Or Aussies being told that maybe they're partially accountable for this place that, um, that we're in, right? And I think a lot of Aussies who've tightened their belts, you know, possibly don't know where to look now in terms of, I mean, why is the inflation still going up and what have I done and what do I do to control it? I mean... Mm. They're paying their mortgage. They're sending their kids to school. They're they're going to the shops to buy the food, and and you know possibly just doing those same behaviours. So I think, um, and I know this is covered a lot in some of the psychology talks that Help My Wealth is involved in, um, but but Aussies possibly don't understand how they can continue to drive what the RBA is telling them. You know. Mm. Uh, look, I, I agree, and I think, um, uh, you know, I mean, look, you know, a couple of things that I've been asked over the last couple of weeks around the Reserve Bank that probably isn't getting that much airtime at the moment is that, you know, one of the problems is that if the states, for example, if the US or if the Europe has got interest rates higher than Australia, then the problem is it affects our dollar. All right. So and uh, because, you know, and what we've been experiencing at the moment is the dollar weakening over the last few few months. And, and the problem is that the dollar becomes weaker. It, it impacts on petrol prices. All right. And mm. so so you've got this problem where if they don't increase rates, then petrol at the Bowser becomes more expensive. And that's one of the basket of goods that the Reserve Bank's measuring when they think about, um, uh, you know, whether inflation is going up or not. So there's this there's this, this chicken and egg problem going on, which again comes back to well, what does the average person um, do about that? Well, it's it's outside of their control, um, and uh, and and that is something that I think is really you know causing a lot of people to pull pull their hair out about just um, you know in, is, is in terms of that you know what else can I do to 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 protect myself or to keep things um, get things back to normal, um, mm. so. Yeah, but um, 
so yeah and look and the other one that is sort of quite sticky at the moment even though it seems to be coming back into the right direction is 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 the unemployment all right and that's mm -hmm. always a tricky thing to say well the right direction is for more people to become unemployed which is not nice for anyone to sort of say or hear mm -hmm. um so um i know uh, you know the big banks these days are getting very good at gathering information and one of the big four turned around and said that they've actually now worked out how to um you know uh, create an algorithm that tells them how much wages are increasing across all of their bank accounts um, so and and they were saying that the the increase in wages has sort of dropped a little bit lately and it's down to about sort of three and a half percent now that the increase year on year has happened so mm -hmm. which again seems to be back to that sort of um call it normal range that that the government would say is is um is fair and reasonable um so yeah so the petrol and the wages i think they're the the the, 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 the two big you know um, things that just seem to be uncontrollable from our perspective at the moment. Um, so, but um, yeah, so look, I guess, you know, in, in thinking about that, then, you know, obviously, I think we're both saying that, hey, it could be, um, you know, well, what we're hearing is that it could be one to two years before we start to see that reprival, that reduction in interest rates based on the common commentary out there. So, um, but I guess what's important is to also say, well, what does, you know, are there any opportunities or things that, you know, possibly our clients could be looking at when we think about what's going on currently at the moment? Um, you know, have you got any thoughts about that? Well, look, with rates where they are, obviously, you know, people's borrowing capacity does get a hit, right? So people, so that means the the flow of new transactions into lenders um, will be tighter, right? So I do see that the competitive landscape among the lenders will increase, right? Because they'll all be fighting over a possibly a smaller patch for a year or two. So mm. I think the the competition in the lending landscape, not just interest rates, but um, some of the ways that they will, um, well, some of the borrowing capacity policies that lenders have, um, and that, that, that's already started to play out over the last 12 months. If you look at, um, you know, some of the big banks and smaller ones have introduced policies where for a refinance, they might not apply the normal level of buffer interest rate in their mm -hmm. assessment, as long as the clients aren't necessarily borrowing new money, right? So it's opening up some policy ideas in terms of how lenders um, calculate borrowing capacity. I think we're going to see continue to see a lot of movement because lenders are going to be com competing for a smaller amount of thing. I think we're going to see some innovation um, and, and on the interest rate front as well. So I think um, for us, we're, there's going to be more opportunity at um, presenting whether it's at the client's same bank or existing bank, there's going to be a fight for to retain mm. to retain the business, and I think that's going to get more and more um, competitive, and and that's going to be great for customers, you know, and that'll help them, um, I think, through this a bit. Mm. So what you're saying is, I think, is that there's almost a greater chance that if your existing bank says they can't help you at the moment, that um, because of these assessment or these policy changes, there's almost more likely to be another lender out there that might help you at the moment. I think so. I think mm. that, that's a very real possibility. Yep. Mm. And, and okay. we're starting to see it. I mean, at the at the very aggressive end, um, there's a couple of lenders that will, that will apply no interest rate buffer to a straight mm. refinance. They just have to show that um, the client's been meeting their current repayments, have a current job, and as long as the interest rate they're moving to is better than the one they're paying, bang, they can move straight across. And 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 I think that's a great policy. I've got no issue with that. And and it keeps the existing lenders. And I think what's the term? Mortgage prisoners. I don't particularly like that term, um, where where a lender can take an advantage of an existing customer with the knowledge that it's unlikely they'll be able to move. Right. And I think that um, that's been that's been rightfully addressed. I think uh, I think from, from a I think there's some of the authorities or some bodies come out and um, iterated sort of industry compliance measures to to stop that. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. No. It's it's yeah. It's not good. It obviously reduces competition and uh, it it creates 
the the risk of laziness in the industry, doesn't it? Which you know, none of us really want. Um, no. So, um, so look, mate, I, I wouldn't mind. You know, uh, in past uh, webinars we've done, you, you've sort of talked through what uh, I guess a healthy process is for people to sort of follow, or what we follow for our clients when it comes to making sure they are on the best rate. Would you mind sort of going over that again, just for us, for one or two minutes? The, the process that we follow to yes, ensure. Yeah. Mm. Well, for us, um, you know, a client settles, let's say they buy a property day, today and and it settles just before Christmas, for example. Um, firstly, in the month or two after settlement, we'll make sure that they've bedded into that loan and they understand how it's working and the offset accounts are all set up properly and that the interest rates that was in the loan contract is the thing that they're being charged and making sure that all of that, those boxes are ticked. Mm -hmm. um, and then over the course of uh, of that of the next calendar year, let's call it 2024, next year, they'll they'll hear from us on, on a telephone at least twice. Uh, they'll get an email from us at the three month and six month mark, and uh, a, a sort of a newspaper, or sorry, a newsletter each and every month. So um, they will hear from us, mm -hmm. not so I'm much because really we. No, not so much that we think that they're going to click and read everything from front to back. It's just keeping us in mind and a lot of the communication we send to them is with a view to to making sure that they're they're ticking along okay. And certainly by the 12 month mark, um, uh, it's never our aim to move clients after 12 months, but you've got to make sure that the clients are in getting a rate that's in line with the competitive offers at the time. Mm. So usually around the 12, 18 month mark, we might just go back to their existing lender to make sure that their discounts are bringing them, bringing them in line with the market. I mean, clients don't like moving banks every 18 months, two years, and that's not really what we're interested in either. But we just want to make sure that people are comfortable understanding that um, they're always in the ballpark of getting of their rate being um, being at the sharp end, you know, which is only one component of what a client really comes to us for. They come to us, you know, to be looked after and, and for a smooth process where possible and to to understand the process of buying and, and borrowing and what structural things they need to have in place for a long-term benefit. You know, interest rates certainly sits there in the important factors, but certainly it's not the number one that our, most of our clients are interested in. They mm. The clients tend to have a long-term view of how they need things structured with the pur purpose of their investment loans and home loans and interest only and tax optimization and where their offset accounts are beneficial and where they're not and where they don't have redraw and where they do have redraw. All those big major things to ensure that their long-term structures are clean from a perspective of building a portfolio, which is what um, most of our clients end up doing. Mm. You know, most of our clients that have got a bit of equity, that's the next thing that they look at doing. And and interest rate is important and they need to know that they're getting something good, but um, it's all those other big sort of strategic things to keep their portfolio um, optimal. You know, that's mm. that's so that's where the regular communication comes in to make sure that everything's sort of playing in line with that long-term strategy that, that we've got in place. And, and I think it's important to highlight the experience, you know, like I, I know I, I'm with one of the big four lenders and I walked into a branch the other day to do something that I thought I had to go to the branch directly for, right? And um, and there, there was two options I could take. This was about sort of doing some solar roof tough stuff um, on my house. And I actually ended up educating the um, the home loan person on one of the products that they actually had available that they'd never heard of before. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and so the fact that we're doing this every day is uh, is mm -hmm. is, and, and that's all we do. You know, is is important to sort of recognise. So obviously, once we've um, had that um, opportunity to review rates at that 12 to 18 month mark, of it, uh, my guess is that also gives us um, the ability to talk to the client and compare them to the industry as well and what's going on around the place, just to also give them that confidence that it's not just about the best rate that their own lender will give, but that it's competitive to everything else. Would you agree with that? I would. And, and we're cognizant of the fact that our clients are out there in the marketplace, right? They're, mm. they're watching television, they're getting emails, they're talking to their friends and, you know, we, we've got to be cognizant of the fact that, um, uh, you know, when they hear 
their friends talk, you know, that they're confident that what they've got, they're happy with, you know, mm. and and if if they have a question or a doubt as to whether or not they're getting the best thing, there's only one place they come. So we're trying to build a process to build that trust so that when they do hear something, they don't just go in that direction, but they come, you know, that we build that um, that relationship where they're confident enough to come back if they've got a, a concern, right? Um, and it's fair enough sometimes some clients don't like coming back with a concern. They feel as though they can't come back, you know, Vision helped us with that loan, but, you know, we don't know if that's appropriate now. I don't know if I can go back to Vision to sort something else out, so I'll drift off. We need to to build that really open relationship where they can come back to us with a concern that they might have. Mm. And a lot can change over two or three years, hey, um, you know, in terms of you know, the suitability of your product or a suitability of a bank. Um, so, I mean, we certainly... Um, aim to give them a long-term solution so but um you know in terms of how the banks behave and, and what changes happen we, you know we're not really in control of that are we no that's right i mean if i look at the the mix of lenders that we've used year to year over the last 20 years i mean perhaps over the first five years oh, it would be fair to say that 70 75 percent went to the big four you know mm. in, in our first five years that number now would be around would be under 50%. Mm. You know what I mean? So there's still a fair chunk, but it's a sh it's a big shift. And certainly, you know, if that 75% I was talking about before, 50% might have gone to one or two of those lenders. Mm. Whereas there's no one lender now in our mix. Um, and we're writing a lot more, right? So mm. we're writing a lot more. And, um, you know, there's no lender that's sitting at 15% anymore. Mm. So that's the shift that's really happened in the marketplace is there are so many lenders that are totally suitable for many different circumstances. And so that that may be uh, something that a lot of clients or the marketplace mightn't realise because so much of the media landscape is dominated still by the, the organisations with the biggest marketing budgets. But there is such a huge layer of second and third tier quality um organizations that's suiting so many australians for and that's that 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 that's great for us and great mm -hmm. for the great for the industry i mean even the fact that we, you and i both have this habit of probably talking about the big four but um you know correct me if i'm wrong now it's it's, it's almost the big five it is the big five and you know and and of course you know bankwest is now part of the big four and you know uh, yeah i'm not you know, Suncorp and ANZ may may have a marriage at some point, which, you know, I prefer those choices to stay a bit separate. You know, I'm a bit, I love those separate brand, those brands staying separate because, it, you know, I'm not saying that Suncorp going to ANZ will destroy Suncorp. I'm not saying that, but it's just great having Suncorp as a separate choice. That's, they've been a big growing lender for us. I'm not trying to pump their tyres here, but but it's, it's, it's great having that strong independent second tier. Um, mm. Uh, they've been really, really important over the last five years, I would say, five, ten years. You know, your INGs and Bankwest and Suncorps and, of course, Bankwest has a different balance sheet now. But don't you think those brands and those those organisations have played a really good part in over the last five, ten years? Oh, look, absolutely. I think... Um... You know, and and there are some some great stories in there about what different lenders are brought to the table. And I think sometimes the bigger they get, it harder. It, possibly, it's a little bit harder for them to stay innovative and and um, and find those niches that they do well. Um, you know, um, you know things like you know whether it's owner builder loans or relocation loans or you know even different lenders saying well we don't do construction or we do do construction. You know, they 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 are niches that. Um, mm that that you know you, you can actually have a horrible experience or a great experience if you pick a lender that actually does that well um so uh so yeah no no i totally agree competition is important um to and and you, you get one player um that just gets too 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 dominant and, and it does it impacts on things mm. um so uh, and, and and you you look at the whole ndis industry right the ndis mm. is a is a massive thing right ndis and it's important in australia and and so the government supports it and when the government supports something investors come in right mm -hmm. so so the whole there's a whole raft of property investors wanting to build ndis properties because 
the yield is good, right? And so there's a lot of a lot of Aussies wanting to build NDIS properties, which Australia needs, right? And that's where the money's coming from. And again, you know, there's no top tier or second tier that really are dealing with that because it's something new. So mm-hmm. the entire wholesale market comes in and looks after that problem. And so there's a whole raft of lending happening, good lending, because they're, they're good clients and they're doing a good thing. Um, and there's and and so, yeah, there's a whole raft of mortgage managers and uh, wholesale lending that's that's dealing with that segment of of the market and and mm. and it's flourishing. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. So Dave, you mentioned a little bit about help my wealth earlier on and just you know those psychology um, learning modules that we've done. Um, so so obviously if, if people are out there are sort of um, needing some support or, or or structure around how to manage their finance, that is a, a, a I guess a great little add-on service that's a little bit unique to vision in that in that context. Um, so um, obviously people can reach out to us on that as well if they'd like uh, some more information on on what other services we can actually provide just to help them, um, you know, stay abreast of what's going on and 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 keep those um, keep their homes, make sure their homes are uh, actually safe and they're prospering. Um, so, uh, and so, mate, thank you for your time. I really appreciate that you joining me and and helping just to talk through these things. So I guess you know, if I was to summarise, um, tell me if I've missed anything in here. So, so what you know, I guess the message we've um, pro- probably been trying to get out there today is that um, it is a bit tough for homeowners at the moment. Um, that that you know, in- the interest rate situation probably hasn't been great, but there are things that people can do. So you know, we've talked about obviously keeping the lenders. Um, honest and making sure that you know our clients are getting uh, good rates and and that they're staying close to us in terms of that um, the other thing we've talked about is just probably being aware of um, where interest rates uh, the, the current market is sort of talking about that mm-hmm. uh, possibly people have to be a little bit more patient in terms of um, rates coming backwards and that this problem that the government's trying to tackle in terms of inflation is is probably turned out to be a little bit harder than and what we might, uh, might have anticipated. Anyway, so I think we're one of the only brokers. I mean, Help My Wealth and and for full disclosure, it's it's an operation that um, Hamish and a few of us have set up. So it's part of the stable of businesses that's within the vision group, it's fair to say. And it marries up the psychology of money and education and real solutions in terms of the mechanics of managing your budget, right? So help help my wealth. It involves the, you know, a series of education modules, and for any client that settles with us, right, settles alone with Vision, they get ex- complimentary ex- test access to that for a few months, where they get to speak to money coaches, um, attend some training model modules, and actually get access to a platform, right? One of the things that I would say in this environment where we're trying to help people tackle these challenges that are in front is that real real education and real time does need to be invested to to get your head around how to to manage things as efficiently as possible. So I know that a lot of people for their education, they might go to TikTok and get some bullet point influencer style education, which might take 60 seconds or two minutes. Um, now is not now is a time um, to probably um, dig deeper, spend a bit more time and and to 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 wrap our heads around how we deal with uh, the cost of living and interest rate repayment pressures that are here and will be here for a while. So they help my wealth uh, offer, which is complimentary for the first few months of your time as a settled customer at vision. But it just requires a bit, a bit of time. Um, but the outcome will be real, and I, I couldn't recommend it more. And so um, people can just speak to their broker, no matter which broker they're using with Vision. That if they are interested in this offer, that they can actually take us up on it, and yep. uh, and uh, and 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 we'd love to help. Absolutely. And mm. if they haven't spoken to their broker, Pete, who does the post settlement surveys, it's possibly the last question he'll ask. And there's no obligation, Absolutely. but there's absolutely no reason to not give this a go. Mm. No, thanks, Dave. That's you, you've explained that really well. So, 
All right, well, um, everyone, hopefully wherever you're listening to this right now, you're enjoying your day. And um, yeah, please reach out and um, send us a message if you have any questions or if you need some help with anything. If you want to know who the big five lender is, the, the fifth big lender, send us a message. That'll let us know that you've actually listened to the end of this. And we're happy to tell you who that big, the fifth, the fifth one is now. Is or, there a prize? The is, there a, is there a prize? Oh look, yeah, there probably could be. Maybe we can throw in a couple of movie tickets or something if somebody oh. can guess guess who the the new big fifth lender is. Dinner at the Fergusons or something. <laughs> something like that. A second prize can be dinner at the Lennoxes. Yes. Yeah. No worries. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, Dave. You have a Thank good day. Thank you for your time. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Bye.